It's mind blowing how easy it is to scrape any website on the internet using AI inside of an editing process. Today, I'm going to share with you this workflow where I am going to show you how I use Firecrawl to scrape any website and how you can basically adapt that to your own use case. And the best thing about it is that you're going to get this workflow for free. And every component that I am using is also for free. So you can get this up and running on your machine without any cost. With that being said, let's jump to my screen. All right. So I am not going to hold you hostage. I will show you exactly the workflow, the use case that I am running this workflow on and the link where you can download this workflow and get it up and running on your machine. But I will strongly recommend that you watch this video until the end for you to at least have an idea on how to adapt it to your own use case because there are parts that you absolutely have to understand. The website that I will be scraping data from is eBay. I am scraping the trending deals and specifically the laptops. This is very important for a lot of shop owners that basically have to have a database in order for them to know exactly how much each laptop costs and be able to spot a good deal. So having each laptop with the price will help them tremendously know exactly if they should buy it or not. And this process will be tremendously important to them. So let's go ahead and test the workflow. So we are going to run it. The first thing that's going to happen is that it's going to go to file crawl in order to basically get the markdowns. After that, it's going to define the fields that we want to structure from those markdowns. And after that, we will basically call Gemini in order for us to be able to structure the data. And then after that, it will basically go to Google Sheets, create a new Google Sheets, and then it will go ahead and take the data out of Google Sheets in order for it to be able to save it as an HTTP request inside of Google Drive. So let's go to Google Drive. I have just ran the process now. So let me refresh. So this is the process that I have just ran right now. And as you can see here, inside of here, you are going to find all of the laptops that we have been able to scrape from here with all the details about those laptops. So the name, the price, the original price, because remember these are deals. So you have to know the exact discounts that we are having, the product URL, if we want to scrape every single products from them, as you can see here, there are different URLs. So you can have exactly the image of that product if you are going to list that on your own shop and then if there is free shipping or not. And of course the condition, because we want to know if it's refurbished or not. Anyways, now let's actually see how I created this process and see exactly how you can reproduce it in case you want to do so. So the first thing that you need to do is that you need to go to firecrawl.dev. Here you need to create an account, just create an account, go to dashboard and inside of dashboard, you will basically go to API keys in order for you to be able to create a new API key that you will use. So let's call it, for example, eBay and create the API key. This is the API key that we are going to be working later on. So just remember, this is the first step that you need to do. The second step that I would suggest do you do before going back to NA10 is go to the playground in order for you to be able to know at least what Firecrawl does in general. If you're not interested in scraping the data, but rather crawling from a website, it would be good to at least know that we have a crawler and we have a map where we can get the sitemap of a website and scrape the data from there. And then we also have extract. So for example, if you want to just scrape one website like eBay and you don't want to create a workflow that you're going to be running and triggering every time, you can just go back here, basically give the URL, tell it exactly what you want to scrape from that URL and you are good to go. You have your scraping. But the functionality that we are mostly going to be using is the single URL where we are getting single URLs. Now, the best thing about all of that is that if you go to usage, you will see that you have 500 credits, meaning that you can scrape 500 pages for free, which means that if you're scraping a website three or four or five times a day, it will make perfect sense to use this free credits and you can use it for months without paying anything. And the scraping with it is just so easy. So now let's go back to NA10. Let's create a new workflow in order for us to be able to do so. So let's create a workflow. The first thing that you need to do is basically go to settings and here go to community nodes. And inside of here, you wanna install NA10 nodes firecrawl. So if you don't have that, just click on install. Here, write NA10 nodes firecrawl. Click on I understand and then click on install. And it's basically going to install it on your machine. I already have it installed. That's why it does not let me do it. Now let's go back here. And the first thing that we are going to start with is going to be firecrawl. So just type in firecrawl. You're going to find it in here. And then here you will find everything that you can do with the node. Here we are going to scrape a URL and get its content. Here, just create new credential and go to firecrawl and get the API key that you have just uh, created, copy it, and then go back to firecrawl and put the API key in here and then click on save. That's basically going to create the credentials. Now let's get the URL. Let's place it in here. And here we are going to have three formats of which we can basically get the data. We can get it as an HTML. If we just want to get the HTML, we can get the markdowns. This is what we are going to choose, or we can get the extraction and the extraction will need a schema. If we basically are going to give it exactly the schema that we want. 
From my experience, it works very good. The only reason why I'm choosing the markdowns is basically to future proof this in case I want to not get structured data, but create embeddings to put inside of a database and start talking to a website and do this with embedding models that probably can be local. So this is the only reason why I am choosing markdowns and not extraction, but otherwise we would go with extraction, no problem. So let's go ahead and test this step just to see if it's working. As you can see here, it has been able to get me the markdowns with no issues. This is all the data I will need in order for me to be able to get structured data later on. So let's go ahead and go back. Now let's go ahead and get our basic LLM call. So we're going to have our basic LLM chain where we are going to get the markdowns and then we are going to basically structure those markdowns. So here we are going to say define below and I will add the JSON. It's going to be so much better if we actually can get the data. So this way it's going to give me the exact data that I want, which is going to be this. So I am just going to put this in here. I am good to go. So I am going to get those markdowns. And then from those markdowns, I am going to link that to a model. I said that this is going to be for free and Gemini model is for free as long as you are doing a specific number of calls. So to get an API key for Gemini models, just go to AIstudio.com, click on get an API key in here. And after doing that, create a new API key and that API key will go back, create a new credential and add that API key in here. So that's all you need to do in order for you to create a, a Gemini credential. So here I am going to choose the model. My favorite model as always is still the 2.0 flash because it's so fast. So I am still going to choose that. We're not doing something very complicated. We're just structuring data out of markdown. So we're not going to need the 2.5 pro for that. That's good. Now I will have to add the required specific outputs in order for me to be able to control the output. And inside of the output parser, I will basically add the auto fixing, which going to have as model always the Gemini model. And for this, I will choose the lights because it's an even easier task. So we are going to choose the Gemini flash light here and inside of the output parser, I will add structured data. And here inside of structured data, I will show you what I am going to do because I, I haven't yet defined the fields that I need. So I'm going to go back here, add a new node. I will add an edit fields and inside of this edit field node, I will add the fields that I'm going to be working with. And this is going to be an array. I have already prepared the array that I'm going to be working with, which is going to be this one. So product name, price, original price, etc. So I'm just going to copy that. I'm going to paste it inside of the value. Let's just put it as an expression so we can see all of it. If we test it, of course, we are going to have all of our fields in here and we are going to link this here and then we are going to link this to the basic LLM. I will do the same thing for the structured outputs. Also, I have it already prepared, which is going to be this one. So I'm just going to copy this and then I'm going to put it in here. This is basically every field and the type of that field. So what we are doing here is that we are going to take the markdowns. We are then going to try to get those markdowns into the specific format that we want. And then if we can do that directly with Google Gemini chat, we are going to go to auto fixing outputs where we either going to go with the structured output parser. And, and if this doesn't work, we are going to go back to another LLM call in order for us to fix this. So now let's go to basic LLM and here in the prompt user, of course, we have added directly the markdowns, but we need to add a full expression telling the LLM model what it should do exactly. So here we are going to open the expression. Let's get rid of markdowns. I just put it inside of there. So yeah, you know exactly the data that we are going to be using, but I have already prepared the prompt that we are going to be using. So we want to extract all product listings from the provided text and return it as a JSON array of objects. Each object must have the following fields. So these are the fields we are going to take and we are going to map them in order to create just a normal list. And then we are going to give the model the exact structure that we want in the output. And then we are going to tell it to exclude any markdowns, explanations or anything else except the valid JSON because we want a valid JSON. Good. Let's go back. That is very good. So let's go ahead and actually run the process just to see if we can actually get the JSON as an output. So let's test our workflow. So as you can see here, it has not been able to get the right JSON from the first time. It went to the auto fixing output. It tried to do that with the structured output parser. It's also failed. So it's going to go to the second LLM call in order to get us the, exactly the data that we want, which is the formatted JSON. And here we have the formatted JSON and this is our output. And as you can see here, I have all of the laptops and all of the fields are being filled as it should be. That's very good. Now let's go ahead and add 
what I think was the, well, the most challenging part for sure, which is getting the data into the right format in order for us to be able to write it inside of Google Sheets. So here we have code. So I'm just going to copy and paste the code. We're going to go through it like really quickly. I'm not going to try to actually write it line by line because nobody does that anymore. I am going to copy the code that I've had already created before. This is the whole code. And then I am going to write it here. So what the code does is actually take the output that we got from the JSON and then it will try to create it into rows. So it will create a header row. This row that we have here, this is going to be the row that we are going to put at the top of the sheet and it's going to serve as our header. And then it will try to create arrays from that JSON row by row. And this is the way that we are going to be able to basically write the data inside of the Excel sheet. You are going to see the exact format and understand why I did this, but this is crucial if we want to write this into a uh, Google Sheets. So here, this code will get us the right format. And then we are going to go to the second hardest part, which is actually writing inside of Google Sheets. So the first thing that we are going to do is create a sheet. So let's go ahead and go to Google Sheets and then create a spreadsheet in here. And inside of here, we have to create a connection. So let's do that. Let's delete this one. So we've deleted this credential. And now we need to create a new credential. And I will show you exactly how to do that. So we will need a client ID and a client secret from a Google application inside of Google Cloud. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so go to console.cloud.google.com. I'm going to keep the link in the description below. And then inside of here, first thing first, create a new project. Let's call it Scraper N810. Create that. And then here, we're going to wait for it to be created. We are going to select that project that we have just created. And then we're going to go ahead and search for Google Sheets. Go to Google Sheets API. Click on Enable. Once it's finished enabling, you're going to get this page that we have here. We're going to go to OAuth Consent Screen. And inside of here, just click on Get Started. And you basically going to start filling this information that we have here. So let's go ahead and give the application a name. Let's just call it NA10. Let's have a support email. I'm going to put my own email in here. Then in the audience, choose external. And then in the content information, just put another email in here. I'm just going to put another email next and then click on I agree and continue and then click on create. Once you do that, go to clients and create new client. The application type is going to be web application. Just leave it at web client one. And then inside of authorized redirect URIs, you basically want to add, let's go back to our workflow. You want to add this field that we have here with the same name. Let's go back here, add the URL, add this and create. Which is very good. Now we have the client ID and the client secret. So let's get them. So client ID from here. And then client secret. Of course, I'm going to delete those. Let's go to audience and here let's add a test user. I'm going to add my own email address. Let's save this. And now let's go back to our NATM process. We have already copied the client's ID and the client's secret. Let's sign into Google. Let's do this. And now, now let's just click on continue, select all and continue. And we basically just created the connection successfully. So everything is good to go. So let's go ahead now and go back here and choose document. And the title is going to be is choose expression. And inside of here, we are going to call it eBay. And then we're going to add now format. And we are going to have years, months, days. And then we are going to have hour, minutes, and then seconds. It's not named the sheets. It's going to be named sheet one. And here, if I run this, if I test this step, you are going to see that if I go to my Google Drive, let's go back here, let's wait for it until it finishes. So as you can see here, if we go to my Google Drive, I'm going to see that it has actually created a new file in here right now. So it has been able to create this new file and I can basically go inside this new file and I will find out that it's actually empty. So I need to basically go ahead and write the data inside of this new file. So let's go out now. Okay. So now we have created our Excel sheet. The last thing that we need to do is that we should write into, the, into this Excel sheet. So here, let's actually get the node that is going to write the data, which is going to be HTTP request. And maybe you're going to ask me, why do we need HTTP request where we have something like uh, something like append row into sheet. And we can use this append row in order to write the data rather than do an HTTP request. The issue is that we cannot write headers uh, with NA10. We do not have an action or a node that allow us to actually write headers. So that's basically the issue because before we did have an add header, but if you do not have a header, you cannot add any data. So you are 
forced into writing the header first and then you can write the data and since i am going to write the header with the http request i just said you know what let me just use the http request to write the entire data so let's go back here and let's go to HTTP request here. I just want you to basically focus. I really want you to focus on what I am doing because every parameter is crucial. This activity, I think, is the one that took me the most amount of time. And this is the activity that basically forced me into having this code node inside of here in order to format our JSON output in a certain way for me to be able to give it directly into HTTP request. So I really want you to focus with me on this specific point. And so let's go ahead and test the workflow. I want you to basically run the workflow with me let's delete this let's test the workflow so that you can get the id from the google sheet in order for you to be able to use it directly into the http request easily so please do that with me so it has finished with fire crawl it has created the fields and that's good so it has finished now let me link the google sheets to http request again all right so here the first thing that we are going to do is choose the put method the second thing that i'm going to do is write the data which is going to be this one so we are going to take the spreadsheet ID out of the Google Sheets node, just delete it and then take it from here and put it right here. So this is going to be our uh, spreadsheet ID that we are going to take from the Google Sheets. After doing that, you will have to choose the predefined credential type and the type is going to be OAuth API and then choose the credential that we have already created. Here we are going to activate the send query parameter and the field is going to be the value input options that we are going to copy from here and then we are going to put here and then the value is going to be raw. After doing that, we are going to go to the body. This is where we are going to have most of our important parameters. The first body parameter is going to be the range. This is where from where we are going to start our writing. And by the way, we are going to start from A1. So we're not going to define until where we are going to write because we don't know. The data can be as large and as small as, you know, you're scraping. So we don't know that. And by the way, inside of the URL, we have already defined the range as well. So we are always going to start writing from A1 because this is where the sheet starts. Here we are going to add the other parameter, which is going to be values. And the values, as I said, we have already prepared them inside of the code. So it is going to be cheat data. So just, you know, uh, drag and drop that in here. And after that, let's add the last parameter, which is going to be the major dimensions. This is just to tell it that we are writing dimensions. There are rows, not columns. So here the value is going to be rows and that's everything that we need to do. And here, if we go to home, Google drive and refresh, we are going to find the latest file that we have created, which is going to be empty right here. And once we're going to go back to our workflow and click on test step, it's going to execute it. And here it should be node executed successfully. And if I go back to the node that I have just seen, you're going to see that it has already wrote all the data and that's basically it. So we have finished this process. And of course, this process is not going to be launched manually. You are going to launch this process with a scheduling. So you are going to schedule a trigger and this trigger is going to either run daily on an hourly basis, on a weekly basis, and everything inside of this process is for free. So you can actually have this run for, I don't know how much time, depending on how much you are scraping, it's going to run for a week, a month, two months, three months for absolutely for free before you even can think about paying for the Firecrawl service or paying for the Google Gemini API key. If you want to purchase a Firecrawl credit after doing that, you can use my affiliate code, which is going to be in the description below. But as I said, at the start, you can absolutely use it for free until you have your process up and running. And then you can decide. Thank you guys so much for watching all the way through. I really appreciate it. And I will catch you guys next time. Peace.